Hey, it's Papa again. We've been talking about sedimentary rocks that contain mostly quartz and potassium feldspar. We've talked about conglomerate, which tells you there's a river there. We've talked about sandstone, regular sandstone, uh, which when all the particles are the same size, we call that equigranular sandstone, which tells you there was a coastal plain sands or uh, a beach area or, or sand dunes. Uh, and we've talked about siltstone, which um, I'm not super up on it, but I know it does form in rift grobbins or rift basins because you've got so much of that uh, pigeon siltstone up in Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Now we're going to talk about very fine particles of um, mostly feldspar, mostly potassium feldspar. Feldspar is what is a major ingredient in mud and clay, forming clays. So when you get down to the very fine mud sized particles, you don't get you don't get much quartz in there. It's mostly feldspar, and that forms a rock called shale. Shale. Okay, well, how does shale form, and where will you find it? Okay, if you go down to the beach, uh, let's say savanna area, you're going to get down to the water's edge, but you're not going to be at the beach exactly. You're going to be looking at a, across um, an opening, a sound they call it, and on the other side of that sound are barrier islands uh, made of sand. I forgot to mention that's another place where you find sandstone in these beach barrier islands. And the barrier islands are where all the big condos and the beach houses are because that's where the, the beach is. But in between the barrier islands and the mainland there is the sound, and the sound is full of mud. Um, they're mud flats. The sound is very shallow, and and it can also be a bay like Choctahatchee Bay up near Panama City. Uh, that's where mud forms, and that mud hardens eventually and turns into a rock, a sedimentary rock called shale. Also, if you get out in the ocean, past the, the sand, um, the barrier islands and the sand that erodes off of those barrier islands, you get into an area of finer particles, which is also mud, and that can form into this uh, shale as well. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so, let's look at some examples of shale. Here's a piece of shale, and this is called Rome Shale. And it's, uh, it's from the Valley and Ridge province of Georgia, up near Chatsworth, I think I got this. And one thing you're going to notice about shale is that it forms these really thin, platy layers a lot of the time. Also, you're going to notice it, it's pretty soft. See, I, I broke off a piece and and see how I could I scrap, put that scratch in there with my thumbnail. It's soft. See, look at that. A piece of that shale, slaty shale, uh, fell off and it's soft. So why do they call it slaty? Because when shale gets metamorphosed, and it's subjected to heat and pressure, it turns into slate. So shale and slate are very similar. Uh, and so they both have that slaty kind of flat, thin, flaky kind of texture. Except that with the shale, you can mostly scratch it with your thumbnail, or for sure a nickel, and you can break it off. But with slate, it's hard, so hard that you can't do that. Um, so this piece of Rome shale formed way, way long time ago. Would you say that there was a lot of iron in this mud when this formed? I would say yes, a lot of iron. And it pro might have been a dry time when this mud was laid down. Um, when was this mud laid down? This was laid down in Cambrian times uh, when the supercontinent Rodinia had rifted apart and all the little continents that formed after it rifted began to sink and so the mud rose up on the land because the sea was rising up and it brought that mud with it that um, the mud from the uh, the the inner, inner uh, island bay the mud flats and uh, that's how this formed that would be 550 million years 530 million years ago something like that okay now here's another piece of shale and this is not as slaty not as thin as the other but it's soft you can take a nickel and 
scratch this. But look at this cool. What do you see? Doesn't that look like the imprint of a fern? That's because that's what it is. It's the imprint of a fern that formed during Pennsylvanian times. This would be about 330 million years ago. Um, when Africa crashed into uh, North America, what is now North America, it created huge mountains and they eroded and you had all these coal swamps everywhere. And um, ferns, forests grew in the coal swamps and sometimes they got covered up like when the ocean rose, it would bring mud, the mud flats from the ocean came up and covered those fern forests and made trap these ferns into this Pennsylvanian mud. Isn't that cool? Mostly, this shale is mostly made out of uh, feldspar because it's very fine particles. There might be some quartz in there, oh yeah, but I think it's mostly feldspar and it's also, this is unoxidized. Um, the iron has not been oxidized. Here there's some oxidized iron. Iron in here has been oxidized. This was exposed to air somehow. Maybe it was laid down in uh, mud flats that stayed dry most of the time. But this was laid down. Uh, oh, the, it's the climate. That's the climate. This was laid down uh, during Pennsylvanian times when um, our when Georgia and the eastern United States was right along the equator. And the climate was wet and warm all the time. So the iron and the rock did not get oxidized, and that's why this um, the shale is gray whereas when this was laid down excuse me we were in a more dry kind of climate zone and so oxidation occurred in this shale so shale is made mostly of feldspar probably potassium feldspar mostly and other minerals too uh, that get mixed in with it uh, obviously water gets combined with it uh, chemically um, and um, it usually forms in these soft, thin, easily broken pieces. Um, and it comes from mud. Okay, bye-bye out.